I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast, take two. We got kicked out of there, Josh, because the press conference has started. But yeah, first and foremost, man, it's been a long time. How's things? Uh, it's been a long time, Andy. I am um, I good, mate. I'm uh, down here in uh, Manchester, you know, training away. Been down here for a number of months now, since about oh, late, late September, October. Been down here training, training away, teamed up with Joe and the new team and getting everything right. So... Aye, I'm enjoying it. Got my module back, got the spring back in my step, looking forward, going to the gym and really enjoying my boxing again. Why have you got your module back? Was this the, the new change in the environment? Was it the fighters in the gym? Did, what did, what's Joe bringing to your, your game now that was missing, so to speak? A bit of it all, really, you know. Um, the, how you doing? Yeah, just the change, change of scenery, you know. Um, got a bit of, sort of complacency the last time, a bit of, the, a bit of complacency, started going a bit stale. And uh, we sort of fell out of sort of love with the, the gym and the environment I was in, you know. But I just needed a change to get my to get my mojo back, the excitement back into the gym and things like that, you know. And the the lead up to the last fight, you know, it just it just wasn't there. There was just nothing there. I couldn't get up for the fight. Couldn't get motivated. Couldn't de- just wasn't enjoying my training and stuff. So I've moved everything, brand new team, brand new setup. And yeah, I'm I'm flying. I've got my module back. I feel like I'm a kid again, going into the gym, excited every day, going to the gym, and I I'm I'm loving it. Got my module back, mate. Yes, well, that's good to hear, mate. Uh, is it that old sort of sentiment when people say a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter for you? Yeah, a bit of that as well. You know, a happy, dangerous fighter and focused one now as well. You know, got my got my the challenger mentality back and back to climbing and chasing things rather than being on top of the mountain and being chased. I'm back to the chasing. You know, got that mentality to obviously shut this fucking prick up and uh, move it, move on with my career and on to bigger and better things. And uh, that's the mistake I made the last time. I was looking at bigger and better things instead of the thing that was right in front of me. So I'll not be making that mistake again. Well, let's talk about. It. I mean, boxer put a, a post out saying the back in Glasgow, fourth of March. There was no who's fighting on the fourth of March, but I think we can put two and two together and come up before. It's obviously fourth of March is the date uh, the rematch with, with Jack Carroll. Um, you mentioned that you got your mojo back. You want to shut Jack up. Um, so what is going to happen this time round? This time it's uh, it's going to be a seek and destroy kind of job. I think it's going to be a demolition job. Um, me at my best, he gets absolutely nowhere near me. Um, I mean. He came close the last time. He came awful close the last time, but I was as weak as a kitten. I was crap. I was my feet were dead. My just crap. I was just crap. You know, on the night, I was terrible. You know, so that's the worst performance I've had in my whole career. You know, I've I've went, I've went almost ten years, Andy, before a defeat in my whole career, amateur and professional. You know, um, since the Commonwealth Games, Glasgow, 2014, I've just been on some amount of form, just going up and up and up and up and you know, winning all the time, you know, chasing, 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 and you're bound to have a wee dip at some point, you know, in your performance, and uh, I'm glad that I did it the last time, one of the most important fights, you know, it's, I think it's happened at the best time of my career, I was at the top of the Mount Everest, and you know, and I got a little bit of complacent, and I had a bad performance, my only bad performance in about 10 years, and uh, you know, I've had my wee dip, and now it's back on to, back on it now, back on the rails, back on the horse, and back to you know Trojan away again like training away like a Trojan Josh do you have to go in there and make a statement possibly even get a stoppage maybe even stop Jack Carroll the reason being is we all know the backlash of the last fight I mean it was evident the the message on social media and whatnot people to this day saying that you lost and you lost do you need to obviously put this to bed by putting on the the performance of a lifetime and stopping Jack Carroll on his tracks no, I don't think so. You know, again, there's not, there's not. I keep getting, I keep saying this. There's not anybody in the world that can say to me and convince me that I lost the fight. I don't think that I lost the fight. You know, I was in there. You know, so I fucking know what it was and how it felt and be Jack and all that. You know, so I was in that fight. I felt like I did enough to win the fight. I've said it in many, many interviews. Could have went either way. I was expecting, waiting on the, the result, I thought, you know, maybe a draw here is going to be 
a fair result. I think maybe a draw. But I didn't think I lost the fight. If I went to Jack, obviously I'd been gutted and lost the fight, you know, and took the loss like a man and moved on and went for a rematch and and tried to get the fight again, you know. But I don't, I don't think I lost the fight. So you're at the quick answer, no, I don't think I do have to put on a clinic. Just go on, box well, win the rounds. If the stoppage comes, if I hurt him, I'll be putting him, getting him out of there. That's for sure. Do you give Jack sort of credit the way he performed that night? Obviously, you say you weren't at your best, but you ever, do you ever, I know there's been a war of words between the two of you, but do you, ever, do you give him any credit for the way he performed on that night? Listen, he done well. He boxed, he boxed a, a game plan. He boxed, a, he, he boxed to his game plan and executed it well. You know, I knew he, he never surprised me with anything. I knew what he was going to do. I just couldn't fucking do anything about it because I was shit. You know, and uh, I'll be the first person to tell you that, and he'll tell you that as well that you know I was crap. I certainly was. I was terrible. But at the end of the day, he couldn't do anything with it. If um, I was in there with someone else, like a genuinely world-class opponent, like your Regis Progress or Teofimo Lopez or Ramirez and performed like that, I'd have got stopped. I would normally, I, I said to, normally I would talk about what's next for you, you beat Jack Carroll and, and stuff like that, but I get the sense that you don't want to take your eye off the ball on this one, so I'm not going to yeah. talk about the Spence moving up and becoming a two-way world champion and whatnot, but as a selfish jock, bring him, for you to come back to Glasgow, and bring because I think the last boxing event, real boxing event was yeah. yourself and Jack Carroll last year, so to bring big time boxing back to Scotland again, I mean, we're starved of it off there, well, so... It, yeah, well, this is it. Everybody's going, well, why are you not going to Manchester? This and that. I'm going to Manchester, no problem. But I'm the fucking champion. I've got the belts. I've still got the belts. Well, I've only got one now. I had to vacate the other one, but... Uh, I've still got the belts. I'm from Scotland. We don't get any shows as it is up there. There's no boxing going on up there at all. So I'm kind of the, the only... The sole bearer of Scotland to bring in shows to Scotland and for my fans and and bringing shows back to Scotland, the big team bo boxing back to Scotland. So of course I want to uh, keep the fight in Scotland. You know, it's uh, for, my f for my fans and my fan base and things like that. You know, it's of course I want to bring big nights back to Scotland. I'm Scottish, I love my country. I love, I want to represent my country and give the fans and the people of Scotland good nights. So yeah, of course I would love to be, bring, obviously keep bringing big nights back to Scotland. Yeah, and I hope you continue fighting until you're 50 then, if that's the case. But do you see any <laughs> any young talent coming through? You were at the Commonwealth Games uh, uh, last year. Mike, well, Mike McHale, who we know very well. You've got Sam Hickey's in the GB squad now. You've got all these young fighters, Lazzarini. Yeah, I mean, there's some talent out there. Yeah, we've got all them lads. I went to the Commonwealth Games, and even the lads that didn't get the results that they wanted in terms of getting medals, they, they all boxed really well, and they showed that they're, they're capable of winning these tournaments and getting medals and getting the results. And the... The uh, setup in Scotland now with the the national team is really good. You know they're they're in there more often. They're getting more training camps, going to different sparring party tournaments and uh, sparring camps and things like that. So they're get, they're going round the world and picking up valuable experience where you never had that back back in the day. You know it was just we used to just go to tournaments or go down to GB and spar with them lots and things like that. You just got to spar with the lads in the country or your club and things. So. It's definitely picked up, the, the level has picked up now and it's showing on the results that the Scottish team are getting, you know, and, and both youth and um, senior, they're getting, they're getting the results now, so they're definitely doing something right and the future's bright for Scotland, which is great, you know, and the lads that are the young, young Matty, he's, he's got potential to win some titles and, and do well in the support as well. You've got Lee McGregor there as well. You know Scott Forrest is on the the bill here this weekend and big show. So, yeah, you've got you've got good talent in Scotland, and so Scotland's in uh, good hands. We're definitely punching above our weight for a tiny wee country that's not really got the numbers in terms of boxing. You know, it's not there's not that many people involved in it, although it has grown over the last few years. You know, compared to compare it to England and Ireland, and that there's the numbers are minimal and we're still coming up with great results, which is good. How you doing, lads? Well, let's talk about this. The Liam Smith just walked past us there, Josh, so let's just jump straight into it. You're in Manchester. Big fight this Saturday night. Uh, Liam Smith, you've been in the gym with him, first and foremost. How's he looking in that gym? Oh, he's looking brilliant. You know, he's, uh, he's, he's like a train. You know, we've been training together. He's some, some shape, fit, and obviously been watching him sparring for the last four, five, six weeks. He's on point, you know, he's, he's, he's firing, he looks vicious and uh, I'm looking forward to this on Saturday, not only just because I'm in the, the camp, but as a boxing fan, you know, it's, a, it's an intriguing fight, 
it is it's definitely an intriguing fight. Um, you've got the two mixtures of characters. They're, mm. they're like chalk and cheese. You know, Liam's very down to earth and a uh, serious character and very professional and doesn't really say much. Just goes about his business and, and does the job. And then you've got Eubank, the character, the flamboyantness. His mm. character's kind of like Marmite. You know, you either hate him or you love him sort of thing. So I, he's quite entertaining. So I, I'm looking forward to it. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Big Coogie's also asking for Hank, but I think Hank's staying in there for till March 4th. Um, Hank's at bay. Hank's at bay then. Hank's at bay. Um, yeah, so what's going to happen Saturday night then? Obviously, you might be a bit biased in this answer, but yeah, what's happening? You know, it's it's by any it's a close fight. It's no, it's, I, I see Liam winning. You know, I, I think Liam on points, you know, um, just much better boxing brain, much more experience. And just the the well-rounded fighter, much better, you know. Um, but then on the other hand, you've got Eubank, he's, he's quick, he's quite powerful, he's got a good chin, but his boxing ability kind of lets him down. You know, in his last couple of fights, with the style he's tried to emulate with Roy Jones, that has not looked great for him, I don't think. You know, there's only, there is only one Roy Jones Jr. that can box like that, you know, and you've either got that or you haven't, and I don't think, Eubank has got that kind of skill set so I think Eubank's best chance is to go back to himself is that with his combination punch and his fastness his ferociousness you know in high high, uh, high pace so we'll see how it goes but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, not a lot of people are saying this either but if Liam actually gets a stoppage um, I just think if Eubank comes in with that aggressiveness technically he's not great but Liam's brilliant technically, you know, he's catching and counters and, and I think he'll catch Eubank as he's trying to open up. So I, I'm going with Liam Smith. Um, my head sort of saying points, but the more I'm getting to it is I wouldn't be surprised if I see him catching Eubank with a, with a good sharp counter and putting him on his backside. You're the first person. Now, all the people I've interviewed, everyone said either points to Eubank, points Smith. You're the first one that's actually said I'm going to like went to it and said uh, a stoppage win for someday but that's it that's yeah, boxing well, that's, that's it you know it's boxing but it's just just from, and I'm just going from little clips that I've been seeing and I'm training and stuff you know and and what I've been seeing for Liam in the gym you know I just I, I just know how good he is you know he's, um, he's just he's just brilliant at all round you know he's solid in every department and I just think with Eubank where his leaks and he's a bit wide away his punches and he tries to let combinations go, I think that's where Liam can catch him. One final one then, Josh, before I let you go back and see some of that press conference. Um, we're doing a thing, we're asking all these fighters, you've been undisputed world champions, so we're asking fighters, who is their one to watch in 2023? Now, you could say somebody's made the debut or somebody that's a wee bit more established, but who do you think is one to watch for 2023? Myself, baby. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, not sure, you know, I think... Um, I think, you know, obviously my, my pal Aston Brown, he, he's been back training and sparring with Liam and doing really good work. So hopefully he gets back on the horse and gets a good couple of fights, you know, because he has been all over the world with me in amateur tournaments and won medals everywhere. So his ability is brilliant. So if he can get fights and get right back in, a couple of good fights to get back in and then get into title contention, possibly British British title level this year, hopefully, and pu push on to big fights, bigger fights. So I'm... Um, uh, I'm sort of pushing for my pal Aston to, to, to get a couple of fights this year and get back on the scene. So am I, to be honest, Josh. Listen, thank you so much for your time. And uh, listen, I'll see you probably this, this weekend. No doubt you'll be there at the arena, but March 4th, I'll definitely see you there. Nice one, mate. Cheers, Andy. Cheers, Josh. Thank you, mate. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ballgame. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.